First off, I'd just like to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about my research, and uh, God knows my friends are tired of me talking about fish farms to them now, so I'd like to thank you for that. Uh, I'm from Ontario. Uh, aquaculture has never been something that's been a large part of my life. Um, it occurs to the periphery of most of our minds uh, in rural, coastal communities, largely in British Columbia. But the first thing that I looked at was that graph in the very middle of my slide. That's uh, total revenue from uh, salmon farming in Canada. And you notice it makes a real plateau at around the year 2007. That's really where I started my research. I wanted to see what the role of Canadian public policy was in the aquaculture industry, how it could support the industry, and why it is where it is today. First off, it's important to understand that aquaculture is both an intersection and a metaphor. It's occurred in the past 20 years, uh, expansion of aquaculture has occurred more than 1,000%. It's been absolutely amazing growth before the plateau around 2007. What caused this is very interesting to note. It was advancements in antibiotics and the ability to lessen the amount of salmon that are lost with each uh, harvest. Um, loss rates used to be around 25% in the 90s. Now they're down to around 1%. So it's been great development from a scientific point of view for Canadian industry. Uh, my research really led me down to the direction um, it, how science plays a role, how NGOs and third party advocacy has really changed the way policy is formated in the modern era. There's no real instance in which a minister can look to their uh, assistants and ask for the science, the cold hard facts on an issue anymore. It just doesn't exist like that. And I think aquaculture has really taught me that there's a lot of things at play here and that there's no really right, right way to understand science. Uh, the way that uh, pro and uh, against groups for aquaculture frame their arguments is really interesting. There's the taint versus natural argument, where uh, genetically modified salmon are presented as uh, posing a long-term health risk to Canadians, whereas people are supportive of the industry say this is a natural development from man's long trek out of the hunter-gatherer society. So it's just no really way to understand how science plays a role in policy formation. Of course, the government has their own scientists, but this is, it's a very long and ardent, expensive project to do research. And for the past 10 years, there's been very little growth from policy in the support of this industry. And I think it's really important to know that despite what we know or what we don't know about the future, there's a lot of opportunity for growth. The top right graph there is aquaculture growth in the past 50 years. More than 50% of seafood now is produced in a farmed environment. And Canada has a huge opportunity to capitalize on this. We have very good relations with a US market in which demand for seafood imports have grown threefold in the past 15 years. So I'd, I'd like to thank everybody again. And uh, that's it. Thank you.